Well, if you've been following this series from the very first movie, we're probably at the section that you've been wanting to get to for a long time, and that happens to be our section on animation. Now, animation is one of the most complex features of Anime Studio Pro. Not that any one aspect of it is difficult, there's just many things to consider as you get into your files and start building and planning for how you want to animate your scenes and bring them to life. I'll go ahead and bring up one of our favorite characters, the one that launches every time you launch Anime Studio Pro, and that is the character of Windsor. I did want to point out a couple things here because we're going to talk about it in this section as we continue from movie to movie. I'm going to stop this animation a little bit and point out something you probably never would have seen had I not uh, shown it to you. We're going to bring this arm up here. Take a look at this joint right here. We can see we've got this dent going in on his arm. If you've come and gone through the other movies, you know right now that has to do with how the influences of the bones are affecting the joints. But you also know then that there should be a way to prevent that with how you construct the geometry or draw the lines for the character. Well, in a typically drawn character in Anime Studio Pro, you are absolutely correct. We could prevent that bend from happening. However, Windsor is not drawn with the tool set in Anime Studio Pro. This is another way that you can animate with this program that's very powerful and tremendously flexible. That is to animate with pixel-based imagery. This could be photographs, it could be something created in programs like Photoshop or Corel Draw. This program gives you an incredible ability to go ahead and use this pixel-based artwork and animate it. But one of the issues is, is that when you do bend it and distort it, you don't have the same finesse skills that you do from drawn characters. So I just wanted to call that to your attention. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the areas we will be covering in this section as we go through it. The first one, and probably one of the most important one, is deciding how complex you want your characters and scene to be. Now this seems like one of those no-duh type of uh, issues, but in your character construction, if you don't know how complex you want this going into it, well, animation is terribly unforgiving of a change of heart later on in the process. Usually if you decide later on you want to change some fundamental element that you've got to go back and basically throw out all your work and start over again. We'll also take a look at animation basics. Now I know many of you are probably coming into this program with a little history in animation, but it doesn't take very long. Those of you that are new to animation, very important section. This is nothing difficult. Animation principles are very, very easy to uh, get in your head and start working with, and we'll cover those real quickly. We'll also cover something that I have demonstrated a little bit in the course of looking at some of the other capabilities of this program, and that is keyframing, how we make things happen over time in the program. We'll also look at some other ways to control and modify character motion. We've already explored some of that with the bone aspect, using linked bones to go ahead and deform characters. But one thing we haven't looked at is working with the very powerful graph editor in Anime Studio Pro. Of course, if you've got talking characters, it would be nice if they actually synced up with the dialogue. We'll take a look at how to do that. We'll also cover very important time-saving features called cycling. This is where you can do something like create a character walking but never have to animate the full walk cycle across the screen. You can simply replicate that motion with some of the tool sets in this program. Additionally, for those of you that are interested, we will cover some frame by frame animation drawing skill. And this is very old school. It's how they used to animate. It's labor intensive, but this program gives you a very quick way to do this process. And sometimes it's a look you simply can't replicate by any other method. And then finally, an area that's near and dear to my heart, animating with actual 3D scenery. We've seen so far that we're working on a flat 2D space predominantly. Well, that's nice for certain kinds of animations, but what if you actually wanted to move your camera into the scene? Anime Studio Pro gives you the ability to move around your scene in 3D space, as well as import 3D objects from other programs like Poser. This is tremendously powerful in terms of giving you some very interesting capabilities within the program. Let's go ahead and take a look at the first one real briefly, and that is complexity. Planning for how complex you want your characters or scenes, and ways to just think about some of the stuff as you do your pencils and storyboards. 
We'll call up our good friend, uh, Windsor again. We'll see him make his little move and wave, and he smiles, and now he's done. I want to show you how this character is put together because it's got a fairly basic level of complexity to the character. Now, I'd already mentioned that he is a pixel-based character, that is, he was drawn on another program like Photoshop. So we're going to look at ways that they took shortcuts with this, one of the complexity decisions, about expressions on the face. Let's take a look at his eyes, and I'm going to go ahead and bring this all the way back to the beginning. I'll call this his happy or normal eye state. As we go ahead and move across the timeline, watch what happens. He's going to blink here in a second. There's the blink. Now you'll notice that there's no actual movement from the open eye to the blinking eye. That's because this uses a little trick in Anime Pro called layer switching. It's a very fast way to go ahead and create some different expressions. If we keep moving down the line here, we'll notice that his eyes will open again, but they're not the happy eyes. They're the concerned Windsor eyes. And again, it's just another layer switch to put those eyes in place and swap them out with the ones that were there. Likewise, the same thing is going on for the mouth expression as we move across the timeline. So now that we can see that, uh, we'll leave Windsor in his happy little world right there. Let's go ahead and open another program or another file that we put together earlier to deal with masking. We can see now with this one that we've got some really nice blinking motion going on that gives you incredible power in terms of creating emotional responses or sophisticated motion to your characters. Let me go ahead and stop this. You can see as we just pull through it that we get some level of control and robustness to the imagery that we don't get any other way. So as we move into our next section we'll go ahead and take a look at layer basics.